Welcome to off-grid water. What does off-grid water really mean? It means having a busted up shed with like weird contraptions holding the door open and uh, running a generator to give you some water that's filtered and drinkable and off the grid. Yeah, I know I gotta sort my wood. Don't judge me. So today I was gonna talk to you about something that a lot of people ask us questions about and that's how do you get your water? Um, do you have a well? Do you, did you make a well? Did you have one drilled? Uh, we were lucky enough to have one when we got the property and it goes down 90 feet, goes down out of the, this is a steel structure that they implemented through a large piece of cement on the floor. Um, goes down 90 feet. I think our foot valve goes to 88 feet. They give a little bit of separation or 87 feet, something like that. But, uh, the reserve goes all the way up to 13 feet. So um, the distance between 13 feet and 88 feet is the amount of uh, volume our pump or our well has. And then there's some sort of a calculation. I'm not sure, maybe someone can correct me or, or add in the comments, but um, the, the, the rate at which it refreshes the well. So after you've consumed all the water, you've pumped it all out dry, um, how long does it take to replenish up to that 13 foot level again? Um, there's a calculation. I'm not a mathematician, not by a long stretch. So I just know pipe go into water, pipe go into well, pipe go into the pump, the pump then spinning, the spinning, the pressure rising, the pressure rising, push the water into this pump, this big, huge tank, the dink. The tank, the dink tank, the tank then hold the water, push the water from the pipe through the valve, goes this way over to the cottage. Okay, I'll stop with that now. I don't even know where the wasting thing came from, but then it comes over here into where it joins to a series of filters, which I had over there on the table. Um, and at that point, it goes to two manifolds. These manifolds all run downhill, so obviously that that uh, drains very easily. And uh, hopefully everything uh, runs right and doesn't leak or anything like that because of any low spots. But uh, I'm just hoping that that doesn't happen or didn't happen. Well, it's not pretty yet. I'm gonna build a shed around this, give it a home. Well, pump, generator, massive holding tank, or pressure tank, sorry. Feeds the cabin. So prior to having the large pressure tank I have now, I had a fairly average size one, which is I think small. So I got a 130 gallon one. The bus camera angle can go to show you what I'm doing. I'm gonna take my water. I'm not gonna need this much, but I'm gonna be filling up this tube as much as I can. tools going back get this water going up to my temporary well shed I filled this pipe up now no time to take this one off
Basically, I'm putting in the old filters. I'm not putting in the new ones right now because I want to filter out the first, you know, few gallons of water. Might as well use the old filters to filter them through. Um, so I'm going to close this right now too. So let's go up to here.
I don't think I want to go any tighter than hand tight. I mean. Now, usually when you're off grid, you learn things as you go. Some of it you learn, you research online, and other things you just, as I said, have to learn for yourself. So, this is pretty much the second or third material type enclosure we've had. They never work. Canadian winters are too cold. It, uh, the sun in the summer just deteriorates the material and then in the winter with the, uh, the heavy winds, there's no chance. So uh, this is our tote, 260 gallons, I believe, 265 gallons. It uh, gravity feeds down to our bunkie over there and our outdoor shower. Uh, so yeah, that doesn't work. Build something with wood.